Goodman Festival of Speed 2023, we are here with Alpine, aka Spicy Renault. Now let's just talk about Renault for a moment because there's a very exciting car coming up. It's called the Five. You may have heard of it. We all collectively fell in love with it when it was unveiled in early 2021. And finally, it's on the horizon now. It's been a longer wait than the second Avatar movie. Hopefully it won't be quite as underwhelming when it does arrive. But Renault are in the process of building 40 odd final pre-production versions of that car, which they're conducting all sorts of final tests on. Within a few months, we're gonna see the real final version of the Renault 5, hopefully with a price tag in the vicinity of the very, very low 20,000 pounds. One of the most exciting cars in recent years, and one of the cars that we are most excited to get our hands on. But if you think that's exciting, we'll have a look at this. This is the extra hot Alpine version of the Renault 5. It's called the A290. Now, a little bit about Alpine, if you're not familiar. These guys are obsessed with lightweight, tactile driver's cars. And in recent years, they've only built one model. That one, it's called the A110. It's fantastic. Lightweight, two-seater, compact driver's car. A little bit niche because it's a little bit expensive and forget about getting any luggage in there, save for a single pant. So with this new model, Alpine want to go a little bit more mainstream. They want to build a car that's a little bit more practical, a little bit more accessible, and of course, electric, their very first EV. So what's it all about? Well, this being a beta prototype, there's a fair few things on this car that will certainly not make it to production. See, for example, the three-seater interior with the driver seated in the middle. Very cool. Never going to happen. The blue specced carbon fibre trim. Again, huge fan. I can probably imagine that being replaced with plastic when we come to production in order to keep this thing affordable. But a few key touches that I do anticipate will make it to production. We've got the four lamps across the front. That's an Alpine staple, iconic feature of all of their cars. I love the two indents just in front of the rear wheel, which for me is definitely a nod to the mad old Renault 5 Turbo. Take a look at that functional aero piece in the rear seat pillar, a bit like you get on a Nero EV. Ooh, spicy. And just get a look on these boxy, flared arches. It's got more than a whiff of Group B rally car to it, this thing. Fantastic bit of design. Even once watered down into production spec, I can see this being one of the most eye-catching cars on the road. It's got a great base starting point in the Renault 5. When you make that wider and lower and meaner, the result is inevitably going to be quite a good-looking car. What about mechanical stuff? What do we know so far? Well, this concept is dual motor. We don't know just yet if that's going to be the case for the performance car. I'm sort of hoping for a single front motor setup like the Renault 5, like conventional hot hatches. That makes the most sense to me. We're going to have two different power options, one in the low 200s of horsepower and a second more powerful version likely in the high 200s. Uh, Alpine stressed that both are going to be plenty quick but without being over the top. These guys really aren't into savage acceleration. They're much more into tactility, driving feel. To that end, we've got multi-link rear suspension. That's the really, really, really fancy stuff that allows the wheels not to move just up and down, but in all sorts of directions for incredible body control. It's not going to be especially heavy, just a shade over a ton, which is relatively heavy for small, old-timey hot hatch standards. But for a modern EV, that's pretty lightweight, and that will be reflected, hopefully, in the handling. Worth also noting that this Alpine, like the Renault 5, is going to sit on bespoke EV architecture. It's called the CMFB EV platform, brand new electric car platform from Renault. And there are advantages to that for an electric car. For one, weight saving. It means you can kind of bake the battery into the body of the car instead of placing it onto it, make it structurally integral, make use of it instead of having to just add loads of extra stuff. But also weight distribution. Typically, little hot hatchbacks like this are very front heavy because you've got the engine and the drivetrain all in the front. Something like this, weight much better spread, again, equating to lovely handling. They're a bit like buses, these electric hot hatchbacks, aren't they? There's none for ages and ages and all of a sudden the floodgates have opened. We've got the Abarth now, we've got the Ionic 5N, which is a bigger hot hatch. But I can honestly say that this is the one that I am most excited to get my hands on. The standard Renault 5, one of the most hotly anticipated cars of this decade. And I personally can't wait to get my hands on its spicy cousin. <laughs> 